There's been a lot of discussion recently and concern about the environment, sort of in our society generally. And there's ICT or Information and Communication Technology or the Internet, a part of that conversation. Certainly, the Internet has an impact on the environment. All of the computers, the power of the Internet, all of the networking uh, infrastructure that's required. But, you know, it's, it's a topic of debate, I think, and I'm not here to try to answer that question because I don't have an answer. But I just want to point out some of the pros and cons on both sides of this argument. So, let's start with the cons. So, you know, certainly, um, the Internet consumes energy. I mean, that is un undeniable. Uh, if you look at data centers, uh, the cooling the data centers require, just the power to keep computers on, there's, there, there's no question that the internet has an impact on the environment. The question is really more how much and more is it worth it. So the other cons I would say are, to some degree, there are still some uh, pretty serious inefficiencies uh, that are left. Um, in how the internet is designed. Um, particularly if you think about the networking parts of the internet. We've actually done a reasonable job at reducing the amount of uh, energy that computers require and making some of the computers and data centers more efficient. If you think about it, the energy and the cooling required by data centers, that's part of big internet companies and pretty much any company that does technology, that's part of their bottom line. And they have a pretty strong interest in trying to reduce that as much as possible. That's a cost to them. So if they can make the computers run more efficiently, then they can reduce cost. And Facebook, Google, Amazon have all done a lot of really good engineering and a lot of really careful thinking about how to try to make their data centers more efficient because it makes their companies more profitable. So that's a good thing. At least we have some incentives that are aligned in the right direction. However, if you look at how net the networking uh, fabric of the internet is designed, a lot of that networking fabric is not particularly efficient. And that even when the internet is quiet, even when it's not carrying traffic, it's still consuming the same amount of energy. And that's not necessarily what we want. One of the things that we look for sometimes when we think about how the internet consumes power is this feature that's known as uh, energy or power proportionality. Is the energy consumed by the internet proportional to the work it's doing? If a computer or a piece of the internet cable is not carrying any traffic or doing any work, then you would hope that it's not consuming very much energy. And to some degree, what we've accomplished with data centers and certain types of computers is making them more energy proportional over time. The networking fabric or networking infrastructure itself, we're still just starting that process. And so that'll, that'll take some time. Um, so the internet definitely consumes energy. Um, we have some inefficiencies left to fix, certainly, um, and, and we're going to work on those. So those are some on the con side. So on the pro side, you have to think about, you know, when you think about how much energy the internet consumes, it's important to think about how much energy would be consumed to do some of the same things. So in certain cases, if you think about email, how much physical mail, how much sort of more expensive forms of communication has email uh, eliminated? If we weren't emailing each other, we would be communicating in some way, and those forms of communication might actually require more energy to, to, to use. They probably would, because electronic communication is pretty efficient. Um, so, you know, the, the, the thing to think about is, you know, what's the alternative, right? What is the internet allowing us to do um, that we weren't doing before, um, and how would that, would that work in a world without the internet, right? So what's the alternatives? Um, the other thing to think about is all of the new work and new ideas and new innovation that the internet is, is sort of supporting. So there's a lot of really exciting things, like for example, things like Uber self-driving cars. I mean, these are very bound up in the technology. Same technology, same approaches that produce the internet. And they, you can argue that those are helping to make certain things more efficient. So in certain cases, we're using internet and network connected devices to reduce building energy usage, which is a huge contributor to sort of our overall carbon footprint, particularly in developed countries. Um, so, you know, it's, it's important to think about the internet in context of what people are doing with it, 
right? I mean, the internet has a lot of value. And so I would probably argue in terms of value per kilowatt hour, the internet is probably pretty efficient, particularly compared to things like transportation, compared to things like um, heating and cooling, which again, still consume a lot of energy. Um, but certainly this is something that we have to think about as we move forward is, you know, how can we make the internet more energy efficient, first of all? Um, how can we be cognizant of our own use of the internet? So leaving computers on, leaving monitors on a lot of the time, not a good idea. We've done education campaigns with that and that's helped a little bit. Um, so how do we try to use the internet efficiently? How do we try to make sure that computers don't waste energy? But also how can we use the internet together to solve some of the problems, some of the larger problems, right? So climate change is a huge problem. It's going to affect lots of different communities. I think a lot of the solutions, a lot of the energy around that issue are going to be bound up. Um, they're going to be sort of developed across the internet. They're going to use the internet in various ways. Um, and the internet will be a part of solving some of those problems, assuming we can solve them. So this is a complicated issue. There's certainly a lot of debate about it. Um, but I think it's important to sort of see both sides.